All right, welcome to the Atheist Experience. We are live. Today is Sunday, September 27, 2020. It's 4.30 p.m. Central here in Austin, Texas, located in the good old United States. I am your host, Matt Dillon. Joining me this week, my friend, Objectively Dan. Hello, hello, everybody. How's it going? For those who are not aware, and what's wrong with you? Uh, Objectively Dan hosts the Atheist Community of Austin's show, Truth Wanted, on Friday night, which I just suggested we should refer to as, like, Art Bell's show, but with if Art Bell were actually a skeptic. And then I realized how old that makes me sound. Right. And then Dan laughed at me. And then I said, maybe we could replace him for today, but it's just too late. So. <laughs> Welcome. Yeah. How you doing? I'm doing good. Yeah. Um, I think that's a pretty good descriptor. Um, it's it's a call in show just like this one, except uh, we, we, we do things a little bit differently. You know, we talk about conspiracies. We talk about just out there ideas and beliefs and stuff. And, and we have a lot of good fun. And I have different guest hosts every week as well. I just had Seth Andrews on uh, two days ago. So you guys should check that out if you haven't already. But yeah, live on Friday, 7 p.m. Central right by the here way, in austin yeah those guests of past episodes which you can go back and watch at truth wanted include john delancey who played uh -huh. you on star trek and yeah yeah i i've been on truth wanted you've been on truth wanted that's some, true some that's other true. people have been as well let me go through the regular announcements first of all thank you everybody for tuning in i hope you're all safe thanks for joining us again this week everybody if you're in chat and watching us live if you look directly up above there there's this little donate now thing that says 100 percent of your donations go directly to the aca that's absolutely true they take no cut and every penny that you donate helps us to continue to produce this program talk heathen truth wanted secular sexuality um crap i'm forgetting nonprofits, etc this all goes to make sure that we can continue to producing content and we're doing it all remotely which means we're constantly making changes and upgrading and getting better matter of fact we just ordered equipment like five minutes before we went live to, <laughs> yeah. to help Dan out with something. Um, you can donate there at that link as in addition, if you're interested, you can get merchandise, which uh, helps support us at well as well. You can go to bit.ly slash AEN merch and find all that information there. In addition, you can become a member at the YouTube channel, or you can support us at Patreon, which is uh, at patreon.com slash the atheist experience and there are two new facebook pages that we're trying to direct people to one is the atheist experience fan group which is facebook.com groups uh and i missed it but it, it was up there and the other one is the atheist experience private fan group and probably the most important thing before dan and i sit around and jibber jabber and take calls and interact with you guys and we genuinely look forward to taking calls on a, on a number of different subjects uh theists are always going to get a preference but if you have something that's not necessarily theism but would fit in with what truth a culture is wanted have you were you abducted by aliens are you too pooped to party and stuff like that right uh, the key thing is there's a whole bunch of people who work relentlessly to make sure that this show and all of our other shows can go out and that's the people that were just out there on the screen uh the cat is in charge of all of us uh their lord of levels just makes sure that the cat is fed because the cat has trained lord of levels thoroughly uh, for that purpose but we appreciate the call screeners we appreciate everybody who's working behind the scenes to to make the show happen and we appreciate everybody who's tuning in so dan mm -hmm. what's I, I before we dig in on calls and everything yeah what's and i didn't i didn't prime you for this so, so i'm sorry because <laughs> i actually hate this question when i'm asked what's your favorite call that's ever come into truth wanted my favorite call that's ever come into Truth Wanted. I mean, you know, we just get a, a variety of different kinds of calls. Um, there's some that are pretty memorable because they're kind of out there. And there's some that I like because, oh, I feel like I genuinely like help this person, you know, uh, or me and my guests. We, we had a good conversation about it. Um, we did have a call earlier this year of a guy who basically didn't believe that the coronavirus was a real thing. Um, and that was pretty shocking. That one definitely sticks out in my mind um we've had a repeated call about someone who believes god is actually a snake and and like there's like linguistic evidence of that that one's kind of interesting i've talked to people about ghost stories alien abductions man uh, uh oh we did have uh one or two people who seriously believed in bigfoot we had that conversation so like uh, it's just run the gamut man i mean all kinds of stuff it's it is amazing it's one of the reasons why you know I, i've been a big fan of this show since since you first suggested brought it out is this notion that you know the atheist community of austin produces a lot of content and that the the nature and substance of that content has changed over the years as people have come and gone and and our interests have changed we're trying to produce content that addresses you know more than just hey let's fight about whether or not there's a god and so we 
you know, that's how you get to things like secular sexuality and parenting and belief and other things where we're addressing, you know, all the things that people are concerned about, even if, if it doesn't get, you know, thousands of views. And so when I, when I first saw what you were going to do with Truth Wanted and I was like, yeah, this is, this is not atheism so much as it is skepticism in action. It is street epistemology in action. Yeah. Instead of being on the street, you can call it maybe television epistemology. Or, sure. I mean, uh, what like you know, and we do talk about atheism too. But you know, w when I first became an atheist, or when I was kind of figuring that out for myself, the the tools and, and the skills that I learned in skepticism were applied to a, a broad set of beliefs, not just my religious beliefs. Right? I had to deconstruct right. a bunch of other stuff in my life, and I think that's true for most people who go on that experience as well. So, like, yeah, we we may have um, some more questions about the God stuff kind of figured out. We talk about that all the time or, or, or you know, we've researched it and we have these great answers. But what about all this other stuff? What about, like, this health claim that I saw on Facebook or, you know, um, these stories that have some legitimacy or, or maybe some of these uh, – things that we kind of have an explanation for, but not quite. Maybe there's different experts that say different things. You know, like there's there's tons of stuff out there that um, we don't always get to on AXP because so many people are trying to argue, you know, how great slavery is, right? So, right. Uh, you know, <laughs> that's a, that's why I thought, hey, maybe Truth Wanted would be a good avenue for that. So, you know. That's it's good stuff. There's there's a bunch of calls waiting. I want to make sure we get to it. For for the record, and I and I don't know, and I apologize if I'm if I'm putting Greg under pressure here, but if there happened to be like a big splash screen or a lower third, all to direct people to Truth Wanted, uh, that would be awesome. But I can say that it airs Friday nights at seven o'clock, and I I tend like when I if I'm Twitch streaming and an ACA, an ACA show comes on, if I happen to be Twitch streaming like on Thursday or Friday night and it's seven, I just turn my stream into a watch party. Like the games go away, and I'm like, everybody go log in and check it out. So I I don't know what have you do you know what you've got coming up this next week? Uh, you know, we tend to try to keep guests uh, a secret for the most part, unless uh for for very particular circumstances, like usually because you know sometimes stuff happens and and people sure. um you know they, they can't meet those commitments um so i i haven't gotten the clearance from our producer yet to actually say uh the show, and i should have before we did that maybe he can message me and we'll do we'll say if we can but i i don't have any upcoming announcements but other than you can always look forward to new guests pretty much every single time we're always getting new people on so it's pretty fun so if I were to say that you were actually going to have Justin Bieber on as your guest co-host this Friday I I would not be truthful that, yeah, that would not be truthful. Okay. Um, yes, that would be a uh, lie. I know you're a big instance. fan and I wanted to you know, make sure I got that in there. Right. It wouldn't be slander because it's not written, but it would be libel because you are saying it out loud. So <laughs> that, that's how that works legally, I think. All right. Let's jump in and have some fun with some calls here. We have, uh, if, if it's going, hey, Jake in California, you're on with Objectively Dan and Matt. How are you? Hey, I'm doing pretty good. How are you guys doing today? I'm all right. How can we help? Hey, or, or maybe you can help us. I just, right. I'm, I'm a first time caller. I'm a real big fan of the show. I watch it almost every day before work and after. Uh, I just wanted to call and, you know, I mean, kind of toss my ideology around a little bit and see how you think about it and kind of reflect off each other a little bit. All right. And, um, <clears throat> kind of just tell you my overall outlook on life being a man of God and all. But I feel like despite the fact that you are good people, you know, you seem to be open to conversation. That's why I called. Hey, so, Jake. Um, Jake. Great conversations. So nice to meet y'all. Yeah. Yeah. You too, Jake. Which, which God are we talking about, by the way? The only God there is. Jesus. Well, that's okay. You're going to say Jesus Christ. Thank you. It's, I don't, I don't want to assume. And so yeah. I ask, and and the second I hear the words "the only," I know that you're going to say Jesus Christ. I mean, that just happens every single time. Nobody says the only God there is Vishnu because yeah. oh, that doesn't work for Hinduism. So yeah. the, the only God there is um, Allah. Allah. I thought Hinduism did only have one God, Allah. or is that a different religion? You kind of got garbled there. You mind repeating that? Oh, I was saying I thought Hinduism did only have one God. Nope. Well, it's complicated. 
you'd have to ask a Hindu because different Hindus have different sects, just like Christianity has different sects and how they understand, you know, their religion. But um, it's it's kind of, it can be one and all the same, but also there can be different ones. It really just depends on the Hindu. I see. Well, what like so? There's what's their main? Isn't Allah their main god? No, no. Nope. So first of all, I thought you were going to come and tell us about your beliefs. Why would you ask us about Hinduism or anything? I am, <laughs> call, I'm, I'm ask a Hindu about, about their beliefs. Not anything. Ignorance. I gotcha. Yeah. But to, to answer your question real quickly, no, Allah is is what's typically used for Islam. It's not for Hindus. But yeah, go ahead. Okay. Yeah. No. Um, so I'm originally. I grew up with um, theists, actually. Um, no, I'm sorry, atheists, um, parents. And I met my wife around uh, around the age of 19, and she converted me to Christian, actually, uh, Pentecost. And, uh, you know, ever since then, I've, I've found that the devil's walking the earth, and uh, he only has power through God. And so you, my friends, you, you, know, you need to accept Christ, oh, wait. your Lord and Savior, to shield off that evil. Okay, so if the devil only has power through God, then why is God being a prick and letting the devil run around and cause harm? Well, see, the devil has power through God. The God, God gave the devil the key. So then God is the one who's responsible for the devil, and which means that God is the one directing evil, correct? I suppose, but you got to have evil to have good. Do you really? Do you have to have sickness to have health? Yes. You do, really? I believe so. So if I'm healthy, that means I'm not sick, right? And so if I never get sick again, do I stop being healthy? I'm sorry, run the question by me one more time. Well, if I'm healthy right now and I never get sick again, and there's no more sickness in the world, am I not still healthy? Yeah, you're, you're sick. I'm I'm sick. Yeah, you're seem, sick, you, you and seem, that's seem, all it will ever be. You, you seem really confused, Jake. I'm gonna I'm gonna let Dan quiz you here on whatever it is you're trying to prove. Well, I I want to okay because you said the devil is walking the earth, right? So can you tell me exactly what does that mean to you? That means the world right now is ruled by evil. Okay. Oh. What does that mean? What What do you mean? It's ruled by, by evil. Definition that that I, the Lord God is not in control completely right now. The devil is. How How do you know that? And God, by definition, is the what, ultimate creator of His what, being, which is man. What led you to the conclusion that the devil was in control of everything, like the actual literal Christian devil? That's in the Bible. Okay. Why, sh why should Matt and I or anybody take what the Bible has to say to be true? Because it's the word of God. How do you know that? It's you know, we were just talking about we were just talking about Hindus. We were just talking about people of other faiths, right? There's other people who have these books out there that say, oh, this is the truth, and this is what people should believe, so why should we believe what your book has to say is true? Well, I mean, it is the most popular book in the world. No, does it's not. But, hey, yeah, even if that was true, right, does something being popular mean that it's true? I mean, because Harry Potter's pretty damn popular. Does that mean it's like running a second? Hey, touche, maybe. I, I no longer believe that you are serious. Harry Potter kind of represents hell and and all all the devils and, and angels. Yeah. Jake, we're gonna move on. <laughs> I don't know about Can that. Can I ask one. you one more question? Nope. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh that's just I was really hoping we were going to get somewhere with that, but if we're just going to do that, then uh, we'll go on to Jose in Georgia. How you doing, Jose? Are you on with uh, Objectively Dan and Matt? Hey, Matt. Hey, Dan. Well, uh, Matt, I called about two weeks ago. I know you go through lots of different calls, but basically our 
our call got a little bit hostile, I believe. Um, I guess I came off kind of like an asshole. And that was, I might have come off as an asshole yeah. as well. That's entire. That happens a lot. Let's okay, just forget well, all that. Let's just forget all that. And today's okay. a new day. Okay. Mm. Let's go. Well, my, okay. So it all started with me calling to say that, you know, I, I feel like when people start to talk about, you know, their experiences with the Holy Spirit and what they genuinely felt, I felt that you were very, you know, um, you, you seem to dismiss. Yes. You know, that. What, so, so here's the, it's, it's really easy, Jose. If two people come to me and tell me that they've had experiences with the Holy Spirit, how do I tell which of them is correct? I think you can, I think you've been able to talk with people that have been genuine and you take them on their word. I mean, I understand that. No, I, need I just said, if two people come to me and tell me they've had contact with the Holy Spirit, how do I tell which one of them is correct? I, I guess it would just be upon you to decide whether who, you know, who you chose to believe. But you don't choose what you believe. They have to present some case that is ultimately compelling. You say you don't choose to believe, but Matt, that's that's not necessarily true. It is necessarily true. I'm sorry that you don't believe it. I'd like to be able to convince you. Why don't you just choose to believe that I'm right when I say you can't choose to believe? Why don't I just choose to to see if you're right? No, what I, I'm saying you can't choose beliefs, and you think you can. So I want you to choose to believe that you can't choose beliefs. <laughs> Again, with, I mean, do you, do you understand that when you talk to somebody, it's, it's like, you're not talking like, uh, like, like a normal person with somebody. Like, I understand your host. I understand you have all this knowledge, but when you come off like that, it's like you come off to trip somebody that isn't, uh, you know, I asked, trained, no, has no, a, sir. No, sir. I, I asked a straightforward asked question. question. I asked a straightforward question. Two people come up and tell me that they experience the Holy Spirit. How do I tell which of them is correct? According to you, you would not know, right? According to you. I'm you asking you, would you stop trying to speak for me? This is why things got hostile. I'm asking a legitimate question. How do you tell whether or not something is true? And you have yet to come anywhere near an answer. You just keep accusing me of bad things in your mind. Would you answer the question? Okay, if it was up to me, if, if two people came up to me and, and told me their stories as far as like they both experienced the Holy Spirit, and then I had to decide, well, it, it depends on the person, Matt. It depends on, you know, how that pro person is approaching me with what they have to say. I would take them on their word if they if they. Okay, the then I heard from the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit says you're wrong. And that's what I'm talking about. You gonna take me at my word? Well, obviously not you because. Oh, so so like, I don't count. All right, well then I'll let you. I'll let Dan ask you, because maybe Dan hasn't heard from the Holy Spirit. But if you're just gonna say that depends on the person, and I'll probably just take him at the word. None of those things that you described are reliable paths to actually. Do you care whether or not you're correct, whether or not your beliefs are are true? Absolutely. Absolutely. I don't. I don't think that's true because if you care about whether or not your beliefs are true, then you then you want a method. You if you care about whether your beliefs are true, then you want to find a method that will reliably tell you whether or not something is true. And just going with your gut and trusting a person based on your own intuitions is not a reliable path, because you can be fooled. Paint me as a gullible person. I get how it works. I absolutely. I'm not that. painting you as a gullible person. To whatever extent you're being painted as gullible, it's you doing it, saying that you're just going to take somebody at their word. No, absolutely not. Because Matt, before when you believed, you felt you experienced the Holy Spirit. And if somebody had told you, Correct. "No, you're full of crap," you would have been. That's not what I said. That's not what I. Re that's not remotely in the fucking ballpark of what I said. I didn't say you're full of crap. I said. I mean, you what don't have you? to cuss at me. I'm not. I can I'm fucking cuss as much as I fucking want on my own fucking show. Do not tell me how to fucking speak ever fucking again, or I will fucking hang up on your fucking ass. Are you we fucking clear? Wow. I, I mean, really? Yeah, I'm, really. I'm trying to have I'm a decent mercy, conversation I'm with at you. The mercy of your thumb from hanging up on me. I'm at the mercy. So do you see the disadvantages there? As far as have I hung up on you yet? Despite the fact that I would be justified in doing it. 
I keep asking straightforward questions and you keep deflecting. And now you're worried about what fucking language I use and telling me not to fucking curse. I asked how to tell the difference between two people who made a claim to figure out whether or not something's true. That's all I've asked this whole time. No, I can't. I cannot distinguish whether somebody's telling the truth. There you go. If I understand where, how you break apart and tear apart what faith is, but Matt, you as an atheist now, I don't know if you ever truly have faith, but do you understand what the power is? How that allows somebody to I'm, truly... I'm sorry, you broke up there. Can you say that again? Do I understand what? I said, do you understand what like the actual power of faith truly is? Now I believe you may not, unless... Like I, I mentioned before, where, faith, before I got hung up on two weeks ago, I do I not denial. I, I do not what faith means to somebody. I want you to tell me. So I, I understand that faith is important to you, but what do you mean by faith? It's important to a lot more people. Not I just, don't care, Jake, Jake, please, uh, Jose. Sorry, I don't care if how it's if it's important. The fact that something's important to people don't doesn't tell you whether or not it's true. What do you mean by faith? Okay, faith. As far as like, you don't necessarily have to have, you don't necessarily have to know a hundred percent whether it's true or not. You understand? I know you want to, I know you keep saying faith is not uh, a legitimate pathway to truth. I understand every way that you've broken that down, but, but faith in something, how, how, how can you just close that door in our face and say, I didn't, no, experiences? Jose, I'm going to stop talking right after I say this, and I'm just going to let you deal with Dan. I have never closed that door. You continually... You did dis on it. I'm going to hang up on you if you fucking interrupt me. You continually misrepresent my position. All I've done is ask how to tell whether or not something is true. I have not said that you're wrong. I have not said that your faith is wrong. I have not said that your position is wrong. I have asked you how to demonstrate it, and this is important because if you actually care about whether or not your beliefs are true, then you want to actually find out what methods most likely lead to truth. If you think that it's, I have no objection to believing things without being certain because I don't think we can be absolutely certain about anything, but belief in the absence of certainty, the type of faith that you're talking about, is not the problem. The problem is, what is the reason for the belief and it does it justify the belief because if you just go with it because it feels right that's not a path to truth and now it, 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 and, what were you going to say there jose and I'll, I'll i'll um i'll talk to you here i mean as long as you don't cut that yeah i guess that it, it would be goodbye bad. jackass <laughs> Oh, I'm sorry. You didn't tell me how to talk to you. You told Dan. So I'll let Dan decide whether or not. <laughs> okay. I was like, Ace the Lot. Are, were you going to hang up there. on him? Um, what's up, Jose? Oh, oh. Um, I'll, I'll say this much, right? So I grew up, um, you know, I, I grew up my teenage years around the Baptist church, right? And one thing uh, that the Baptists like to talk about is they like to talk about Pentecostals. I don't know why they, and they like talking about other denominations. And a Baptist will be the first one to tell you that what the Pentecostals are doing, like, isn't legit, right? Like, these kind of speaking in tongues and, and these other experiences that they have, you know, they... That's ridiculous. Speaking they, in tongues, I mean, I'm, I'm just, me and you can pretty much well, say that that's crazy. But Jose, Jose, millions of people believe that's true. Millions of people. Millions of people, Jose, right? Okay, but so, do you believe it? Are, you believe it, though. Jose, listen. Would it be are all those... Say that li Jose, that that's ridiculous. Don't, Come on, listen, you think it's ridiculous, right? Matt and I might think whatever belief you have is ridiculous too. You have to understand it's a matter of perspective, okay? Like, yeah, the speaking in tongue stuff, we might be able to say that, but we didn't grow up that way. If if you and I grew up that way and everybody around us were having those experiences, we might be more inclined to believe it. Now, I grew up in a Baptist tradition, kind of Methodist Baptist mix. And so I believe that a lot of the Methodist Baptist theology and their practices were legit too. Now, I don't think that, yeah, I, I don't take much stock in it, but the reason why I don't, right, is because I, like Matt was saying, had to figure out reliable methods for figuring out what's true and what's not. And I'll tell you this much, the reasoning that Pentecostals use for their spiritual experiences is not much better than the reasoning that Baptists, Methodists, or any other Christian sects use to justify their experiences. I, I understand that. 
and thank you for for putting it in a way where you're not trying to make me sound like I'm an idiot. I, I appreciate that, but it it comes back it comes down to what you. I have a question based on per- Jose. Are you suggesting that I'm trying to make you look like an idiot? If I answer, am I going to get hung up on by you, or is it still up to Dan? It's up to Dan, but were you suggesting that I'm trying to make you look like an idiot? Matt, why are you, how how can you? Are you going to answer my question? Are you suggesting that I'm trying to make you look like an idiot? You take a very hostile line against. Jose, are you suggesting that I'm trying to make you look like an idiot? That's another question on here. I'm sorry? I'm sorry. I, I, I don't, I didn't realize. I Are you like, suggesting, I were you suggesting that I am trying to make you look like an idiot? It's more than a suggestion at this point, man. I think it's very obvious. Okay. What did I do to make you look like an idiot? Okay. So I, the difference in when I spoke with Dan is he put something out in front of me very, you know, he, he wasn't trying to spoon feed me anything. He wasn't making it. I, no. making it like what did I do, Jose, when you called? Didn't I just ask you a question about how to demonstrate the truth of something, which you avoided and then started making accusations about me? No, it's not avoiding, Matt. It's that certain people don't, uh, don't do not talk the way you do as far as like a Then you shouldn't have fucking called this show, should you? Because if I'm going to ask questions about how you demonstrate right. the truth of your beliefs, don't suggest that my goal is to make you look like an idiot. My goal is to make you either demonstrate the truth of your proposition or realize that you've made a mistake. It's not like a game of chess. That's how you're putting it down. It absolutely it's is a game of chess. It is a game of chess. It is a game of logic. It is absolutely, if I ask you to demonstrate something, it's because you made a fucking claim, and, and, and it's important for us to figure out whether or not that claim's true, right? Can I just, hello? Are you going to answer my question? I, I am. Yes, I understand that. I understand that completely. So please explain what I did to make you, to to show that I want to make you look like an idiot. Because what I want is for you to realize that you're making yourself look like an idiot. Uh, How? By being, by by explaining to you an honest, genuine feeling that me and a lot and millions of other people experience? No, by not, by refusing to answer the question about how to tell the difference between something. I I get, I get on their word. As far as you know, you you you. So you can it judge took it took character. quite a while for to get it took quite a while for, to get you to say that you're going to take people on your word. Then I asked a question to demonstrate why taking someone at their word is not a good methodology. Do you think that taking people at their word is a good way to get to the truth? It has. It, it, I mean, it it it's it's it, it definitely has some value there as, as far as talking to somebody and judging their character would you not agree taking someone at their word is not a reliable path to truth Take, taking someone at their word is is likely to result in you being conned correct not necessarily I, no I'm no no conned. I, I if you if, okay stop oil salesman it's stop. not like that it's not that simple stop man. stop if you just run around merely taking people at their word, are you likely, is it likely that you're going to be conned? No, I don't believe so. And it has You are wrong. It and is. that's why you wouldn't take me at my word. I tell you what, mail me $1,000 and I promise I'll mail you $10,000 back in a week. You take me oh, at my, my word? Gosh. You take me at my word? Absolutely not. Good. Then you just agreed with me that taking people at their word is not a reliable path to truth which means there must be something else that you have to take into consideration, not just their word, right? Right. Okay, so what is the other thing? That's what I've been asking. What is the other thing that is not just their word that demonstrates you should accept their claim? Okay, so fair enough. And and I said faith because whether you believe it or not, you know, I've had people explain to me certain, certain things that they've experienced I I went on about my day, went to sleep, woke up, and and you could. I just had like a sign. I'm not saying I'm not saying that I'm a prophet, but I'm not saying that crazy stuff. All I'm saying is, you know, 
you will have different little hints or clues to I'm asking what those see you're just going with you'll have little hints and clues I just want to know what they are because if we're going to have a methodology to figure out whether or not somebody's telling us the truth it can't just be we take them at their word and we need something a little more than hints or clues that's all I've been asking the whole time is how do we do this and if the if your answer Jose is that you don't know that's fine but if we're going to have the have a conversation about how to tell whether something's true that's important I don't know this. I don't know that. It's hard to hear you, Jose. Can you repeat? Because uh, we got garbled there a bit. Yeah. I'm just saying it always goes like, I don't know. 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 I mean, then when are you going to get to something that you do? I mean, when, how are we going to be able to, you know, how? Uh, it's I don't know. it's, it's a good question, right? Like, how do we figure out when, when can we say that we know something for sure? Can we even say that we know how something? How do you for know, sure, Dan? Right? Dan? How do you know, Dan? How do you know how, anything, Dan? How does he know what? How do I how do I know? Yeah, like what how do I know I'm not a brain in a vat, right? Like we can we can go that whole round. Exactly. I, I think so I think give hard solaces, then then we don't sure, know we don't know sure, that but we don't know anything. We don't would know you anything. agree though? Would you agree though, Jose, that there are some methods that are better than others in figuring out whether of something is true? Are. Of okay. course there are. Of course there is. Sure. That's why I know uh, that's why I put one foot when, sure. I put my, when anybody puts their jeans on, you, put, you use one foot first and the other one. Oh, sure. So if, if, you know if we're talking about these personal experiences with the Holy Spirit, right, how can we be sure that we're right. using the best methods to know that the experiences it's that we have are having the best method? It's not about having the best method. You know what you feel and you know what it is. But our uh -huh. feelings are unreliable, right? Our feelings don't always tell us no, what's not. true about reality, they're right? Unreliable. I, okay. They're unreliable, mm -hmm. right? When you, when you don't know for sure, what, you know, what you're experiencing. Sure. I mean, like, I, I can freak myself out because I just watched a scary movie and I think somebody's at my door. Not the same, right? Not the same thing. Why is it not the same? Very, what makes it different? Just tell me what makes it different. It's not the same thing. Just what, it I, I'm curious. Different. What makes it different? Are you afraid of Chucky, Dan? Dan, are you afraid of Chucky and a vampire coming through your, uh, in, no. in your room? And okay. I don't know what that has to do with anything, though. It has a lot to do with it because you're saying you want you. This is many years you've been to church. I've been to church. Sorry, you broke up. Yeah, you broke Can up. Say that again. What are we afraid of? I'm saying what I said was that when Matt was. Nah. Sorry, you broke up again. Having some connection issues. We can't really hear you. Can you hear me now? Yeah. Try one more time. Okay, one more time, and then I'll let you go, guys. Go. When when I was saying that when Matt would go to church and he, you know, was a, a Baptist and what he felt was true in his heart, he experienced something that you you're not you're, you're telling me that now. Oh, how do you know that was what you felt? Of course, Matt, you felt it, and to an extent, that's where this conversation went spiraled out of control last time. Because I think you're in denialism. And yeah, okay. Jose, I'll tell you this. I'll tell you this. When I was in college, I had a very intimate, I would I would have used the language as spiritual experience with some Hari Krishnas. You know, they're Hindus, right? I, I grew yeah, up I again as a Christian. I, I but I had this meditation session with them. And by golly, I felt something in that. And you know, up until that point, I would have used the Christian language to describe what that experience was, but I realized maybe people of other cultures they can experience this thing and they've just been using the language that they've been you know grown up understanding to describe it and and maybe it's something else you know at the time i thought maybe it's pointing to something more universal right to all humans but as i as i kind of started to read more i figured out oh wow like brain science is actually telling us well we can actually activate some of these experiences on our own like sometimes we could have what we might call spiritual experiences, just doing completely secular activities, nothing religious about it. And so to me, that's why these experiences aren't very reliable methods to understanding anything. Because if I can incite that experience manually without having any special ritual, what does that tell me about reality? Does it tell me that there's something mystical or magical out there? Or does it tell me that I have a biological system that responds to certain stimuli? Does that make sense? Yeah, no, that I, I can I can get behind that. that. And I have to chime in here for a second because I'm not in denial. I fully acknowledge and have repeatedly acknowledged that I experienced things. It's just that when I was a believer, 
I attributed those things to the Holy Spirit like everybody else around me. And now I do not, I recognize that I did not, never had good reason to believe that it was the Holy Spirit. Yeah. I don't deny the fact that there was some experience. The, the, the thing that I care about is what was the actual source and cause of that experience? And yeah. there's no reason to think that it was the Holy Spirit when I can have those same experiences from art, from poetry, from drugs, mm -hmm. from sex, from food. It's not, no, it's not the same experience. You cannot mix it with drugs. and Jose, sex. No, that's not, stop that telling not me what my fucking experience was like. Yours may be I'm different. Not I'm not. I'm not I'm talking not about yours. I am Jose. not. Hold on a second. Hold Jose, on. am I talking about your experience or mine? On. Hold a second. Hold up. No, you hold a second and answer my question. Am I talking about my experience or yours? Hello. Am I talking about my experience or yours? Okay. Hold on a second. No. Answer my question, or we're done. Hold. Am I talking okay. about my experience or yours? Your experience. Thank you. And if I'm talking about my experience, you can't tell me anything about my experience, can you? Hello? I guess uh call just dropped there. It, does, it didn't drop. It still shows up in Colin's yeah, studio. Yeah. So it shows him on the, on the line. That's, yeah, you're right. That's weird. Jose, are you still there? All right. Well, well, just in case he, get, he picks back up, I want to I want to continue this because you you and I get it, and I'm I'm desperately trying to make sure that Jose gets it. But it seems like every time I start to talk about my experience, Jose wants to tell me that I'm delusional or that no 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 you know what you experienced. Mm -hmm. I don't, yeah. and neither did you, and neither same. I mean, I don't know what the, what is the method to figure out what whether or not I experienced something or what it was, what the source was. Are you there, Jose? Yeah, did you put me on mute? No, no, we were talking and you, you, you've had connection issues, you're back. All I'm saying is okay. I had an experience, I don't know what it was. You don't know what my experience was, so stop trying to tell me about my experience. If you wanna tell me about your experience, that's fine. No, but you're trying to stop me from telling my, you're, you're trying no, to- No, sir, I'm not. Yes, I don't know, are, I don't- Matt. I'm not. Oh my gosh. Yes, yes you are. if you are. I swear to God, you say that one more time, I'm hanging up on you. Everybody listening to this call, except for you, knows that I was not trying to stop you from telling your experience. I'm trying to stop you from telling me what you think my experience was. If you want to tell your experience, as I've said three times, you can. No, I'm not saying that I'm you were trying to stop me. I'm saying when I tell you what I experienced, you're trying to alter it by saying, well, that's not a reliable uh, way to tell if something really happened. So do you see you're, 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 you're muddying? No, sir. You're confusing the fact that you had an experience. Jose, Jose, listen. You are confusing the fact that you had an experience with your explanation of what that experience was. I have not denied. You haven't told me. I, don't, I haven't denied your experience, and I haven't told you you're wrong about your conclusion. All I did was ask you how to know that you're right. That was it. I feel like there was a little bit more to that than just how do Well, you I don't give a fuck how you feel. Rewind the tape and listen to it because that's not what happened. Cont I, I don't know if you had anything else for, D for Dan. It, it was mostly with you, but I mean, there's no talking to you. You get hostile with somebody that's trying. I'm to not getting hostile. I'm not. I'm just not letting you tell me what I think. And I'm not letting you avoid answering the question. But that's what you're doing to me, Matt. You, what you're not letting, what you're mad about me doing, you're doing it to me. That sentence made no sense. What am I doing to you? Okay, so if I told you that I experienced the Holy Spirit, would you believe me? No, but I would believe that you experienced something and you are calling it the Holy Spirit. I want there to know what... I, please let me finish. Please let me finish the sentence. Don't you dare interrupt me because as soon as I start to get in there, you're going to say, say I'm being hostile and I'm not. I'm asking. If you experience something, whatever it was, and you attribute it to the Holy Spirit, my question is, what is the justification for attributing it to the Holy Spirit? Okay, my justification is knowing what I felt. That's my justification. Okay. 
if somebody else has an experience that they feel and they know what they felt and they are convinced it's the Holy Spirit, are they correct? Obviously, I have a bias towards yes. I, I would, I would okay. think I have felt that. So how can I deny them what they felt? If I felt the same thing. You don't know what they felt. I had an experience that I had an experience that I thought was the Holy Spirit. Are you saying that I was correct? Yes, I like. I, How would you I'm know that? Honest. How would you possibly know that? Is it possible? Here's it. Here's it. This is easy. This is easy. This will solve the whole thing. I promise. Is it? Is it possible for someone to think that they had an experience with the Holy Spirit and actually be wrong? I wouldn't know that, Matt. Like, no, no, no. I'm asking if it's possible. This is important. Okay. If it's possible, what? Is it possible for someone to think that they had an experience with the Holy Spirit, but they are actually wrong? Yes, anything's possible. I, I, I'm, cool. I'm, I assume. So now we're back to the very beginning of the call where there are two people telling me they had an experience with the Holy Spirit. You have just acknowledged that right. it's possible that they could be wrong. How do I tell right. which one of them is right? You wouldn't. You wouldn't be able to. Okay. How can you tell? I I I explained to you already. I I will. I'm sorry. What? I like I have said for the third time. I don't know either. Then why are we talking? Okay. So this is for Thea to call in, correct? Yes, to explain why they believe something. But you're, you, believe- you you but hang on. I think you uh, are telling me that you don't have a why. I do. I absolutely. I told you through my experience that I felt the Holy Spirit and so have many millions of people. So I think Matt's point is right. If you can't tell between two other people telling you through their experience, whether or not, you know, they actually experienced what they said they did, or at least their explanation is true for their experience. then how can we, Matt and I tell from you that what you're telling us is true? If that possibility is still there, that you know it may not be true. Does that make sense? I think I. Yeah, I, I understand. Yeah. I understand. Well, thank you guys, and um, I'm, I guess I'm glad I didn't. I didn't get hung up. But I mean, I don't want to start quoting Bible verses or going Bible this, Bible that, because I, I I understand that it's just. Yeah, the, the thing is, you had an experience, and you think you have a good reason to believe that that experience was the Holy Spirit. However, absolutely, the thing that you're describing as your good reason, you also acknowledge wouldn't be a good reason for anybody else. Like, it's not a good reason for me to believe you. And the thing is, I had that exact same reason that you did, and then I realized it wasn't a good reason at all. Because you claim to believe that it's the Holy Spirit because you know what you experienced. Yeah, like but Jose you can't. Go yeah, ahead, I was man. just I was gonna say you, you remember when I brought up the Pentecostals point and immediately you were like, Oh yeah, you know, that's total hooey, right? Like none of that makes sense. But again, like that's millions and millions of people's experiences, and that's how they explain it. And if if you're so confident in being able to explain that offhand, you know, then then who are we to like also do that for yourself, right? Like I get it, it sounds dismissive. It sounds like we're not being open minded, but that's genuinely how we feel about a lot of other people's experiences. Yeah. Just because so you glad- know, we, we don't see the evidence for it either. And nobody's trying to make you look like an idiot. The only thing we're ever trying to do is to get to the truth. But you came in especially guarded and especially defensive. And it's like, hey, how do I tell the difference between two pati- competing claims? Even Dan just admi- even Dan sees the point that I made that you're very dismissive as far as when somebody wants to tell you that that's what they experience, Matt. So it's not just it's not just what I me being. I'm not the- going to accept their experience. Yes, I'm going to dismiss their experience. I'm going to ask them Thank you. what. That's what I'm oh my God! Would you shut the fuck up and let me finish? I'm going to ask them why they believe something, and then either they're going to answer or they're not, and you were avoiding it. It wasn't avoiding. It was, I, I understand okay. your structure of getting to something and it's very manipulative in, in a sense because you're you, full you, of shit. How it. dare you call me manipulative? Goodbye. You're done. Blocked, banned, no more calls. I just, we just spent 45 minutes pretty much on one call. 
And the whole thing was, how do we demonstrate what's true? He, and now granted, I've had evidently calls with him before, but to say that it's manipulative, just to ask, hey, how do you get to this? And let me go back and explain. I, I'm baffled. Yeah, I guess it's just, um, you know, it is kind of, I, I think when I was leaving my Christianity, the personal experience argument was really powerful for myself. I definitely had this idea of like the non-overlapping magisteria, you know, the difference between yep. the realm of religion and the realm of science. And I think that's a fallacy a lot of people make. I certainly made that myself, that my experience was somehow outside the realm of scientific validity or scientific probing. But the truth is, you know, I'm I'm a physical human being that lives on Earth just like anybody else, and I'm just as subject to the physical things around me as anybody else. And I can be deceived or manipulated or or, or not even actively so, just passively tricked into thinking something is true when it's not. Um, and we we just have to have good ways of figuring out what's true and what isn't. And we may not be perfect all the time, but we can definitely suss out some explanations are better than others. Yeah. And by the way, I don't consider that, I, 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 if I used the term wasted a minute ago when I said, I think I thought I said, said we spent 45 minutes on a call. I don't consider it wasted at all. I think hopefully Jose got something out of it. We got something out of it, including, you know, bouncing stuff off each other so that I don't get excessively riled up or whatever, because all we're trying to do is get somebody to ask, tell us why they believe. Because if you offer me nothing, why did you call? I mean, I have nothing to evaluate. Literally, Jose's thing, that entire call could have been summed up by him saying, hi, I believe that I've experienced the Holy Spirit. I think I have good reason for it, but I can't demonstrate that to anybody. Yeah, that 45-minute call that, that's done in 30 seconds or less. Yeah, I mean, I guess I, I would have thought the same way a couple of years ago, you know, yeah. and I would have wondered how anybody would have convinced me. And then I, if I realized I can't convince anybody else, then it's kind of a mute point. Yeah. The difference, though, is that when you were presented with questions, you actually considered them and evaluated them. And this is eventually, but it wasn't at, at first. No. You know? Yeah. But I, 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 I've seen the video. And your conversation was was significantly more honest and open and accepting in, from the get-go than Jose, who's, I think Jose's just terrified of the possibility of finding out that maybe he doesn't have the good reason he thinks he does. Maybe. I can't speak for Jose. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know how he's feeling or whatever. But if you are still watching Jose, I hope uh, you do consider, you know, what we're saying here. At least I hope we got a point across it. And, and, you know, we'll just go from there. See what, see what uh, works for you. Yep. Um, so let, let's try to get, we'll get to some more calls here. We've got Lauren in New York who uh, wants to talk about astrology and a proof of God. How you doing, Lauren? You're on with Objectively Dan and Matt. Um, I'm doing good. Honestly, I didn't expect to get on. Uh, we have a really weird echo. With that you. was like, it sounds like you're calling from a subway tunnel. What's up with or, that? Or a <laughs> pool. I, I live in New York City and it's loud if I open the window. So I was trying not to get that echo. Is that better? There you go. Oh, That's yeah, it's better. great. Yeah. Okay. So I have two things. Um, I wanted to talk about. You can. You guys can pick either. But I think I have a potential logical proof for God, and I wanted to talk about an astrology video Matt did in the past. If that's okay. Okay. Um, I guess I want to know your logical proof for God. So I don't think I'm going to convince you, but I want to get your opinion because I both I respect uh, both of your guys' intellect. Okay. Uh, my whole so my idea is that the one assumption I need is that the universe is a closed system, and that if the universe is a closed system, then consciousness would inherently extend to the universe itself, and that therefore conceptually would or could be considered a god. All right, I have no idea what the last half of that sentence means. Um, so well, first of all, conceptions of God. Oh. Hang, hang on. If we're going to call something a logical proof of God, it would be nice if we could put it into a syllogistic form. And what we've got right now is premise one, the universe is a closed system. Premise two, consciousness would extend to the universe. Now, I have no idea how you justify that premise, but there's no way to get to a conclusion from those two premises because you, your major and minor premises are not connected properly. Okay. This, this is actually why I wanted to talk to you about it because I know it's incomplete and I'm hoping that you can like 
poke but, holes but, to make it. But here, I think I can, I think I can, I think I know what you're saying enough to, to debunk it right away, which is this. Okay. Let's say the universe is a closed system and it, and it has existed for five seconds. Would consciousness exist, uh, would extend to the universe at that point? No, it would. Okay. Exist. Now, what if the universe has existed for a million years, would consciousness extend to the universe at that point? If something that was conscious came to be. Oh, no, no, no. If, if something, so, so at some point, something consciousness begins to, something, something within the universe ex, uh, gets consciousness, right? So let's say last Tuesday, something became conscious for the first time. How long after that does that consciousness begin to, it, does it extend to the universe? Um, I'm not sure I understand the question. Do you mean like okay. how afterwards? Does, does the mere fact that one thing, like let's say the first conscious being arises, does that mean that the universe itself is conscious at that moment? Or does the, the beginning of that individual's consciousness extend to the universe over time? Uh, I, um, I'd imagine immediately. Like it's, okay. It's, then what you're, what you're doing there is the fallacy of composition because you cannot extend the properties of the constituent parts to the whole. Mm -hmm. Because just in the same way that my, my fingernail is hard, that doesn't mean that my earlobe is hard. So you can't extend the property of a part of a thing to the whole. So what's what's the uh, wouldn't well if it was a closed system wouldn't it be part of the whole and it would inherently be the whole? No, uh, that's not what a closed system is. A, a closed system. You're talking about something with, with regard to you know entropy and laws of physics and stuff. A closed it does. Yeah. Logic is not going to. It's still a fallacy of composition that you can't extend to the the, okay. the property of that because also. There's a rock in this universe, right? And that rock is not conscious, is not conscious, which means you would have to extend that property of the universe as well, right? And now you're in a conflict because the universe is both conscious and not conscious, just because parts of it are conscious and not conscious. Well, yeah. does that mean we're not conscious? No. I mean, I'm, I'm, conscious. I'm conscious. I'm conscious, but the table that I'm I'm tapping is not. Wait. Okay. I don't know if I understand if I'm being honest. Okay, then let's just go on to the astrology thing. Okay. Um, so you did a, a video with Owen and Jimmy. Yes. So why, my whole thing was the, uh, the two guys who were water signs, known for intuition, got their original guesses correct. And while... Most might not take that as evidence. I think that that should be that the most intuitive signs were able to guess it right off the bat. How do you know those are the most intuitive signs? How do you know those are the most intuitive signs? Because that's what the uh, that's what astrology says. That uh, okay, but if astrology says that doesn't mean it's true, right? So my whole thing about astrology is that. I don't think the stars affect who we are, but I do. Well, then you don't accept astrology. So why would it matter what star sign is intuitive? Wouldn't it? I think it wouldn't be because it's still a structural system to describe people's behavior and personality. So it's still, I mean, you could call it something else, but it's still a similar system. Well, if it's astrology and it's based on the stars and you don't think the stars have that impact, then it's not, then the characteristics of those star charts don't tie to the individual. Mm, not necessarily. So yes, well, necessarily in the same way that the constituent know. parts of the universe do not extend to the universe. The fact that astrology says stars dictate our, do you think that a pair of twins are going to live an identical life and have identical personalities? Um, there have been some case studies about oh, it. Oh my God. Yeah. Okay. What? Dan, I, I don't know where to take this from here, to be honest with you. Um, yeah, I kind of I kind of got to the end, but I didn't want to drop it without you. I, I guess when it comes to astrology, I think it's interesting. You know, I'm, I'm a Capricorn, so, you know, that's people tend to not like those. I, I don't know really know why, but like I I'm I, an I never, Aries and we do, we know that astrology is bullshit. <laughs> See, there you go. And I yeah, like one. I, I, go ahead. I, I, 
when you have different, you know, I, I don't know what the video is in particular you're talking about, but um, when you make Barnum statements, you know, uh, which came from P.T. Barnum, you know, the guy that, you know, that the circus is named after, you know, you, you can make these statements yeah, to kind of later. fit. Yeah, yeah. You can make these statements fit a lot of different people for a lot of different circumstances and stuff. And so um, personality typing in general is always kind of sketch, you know, like if if it when it comes to like explanations for exactly how it, it works, there, it just doesn't seem to make any sense. You know, I, I know that maybe your belief in astrology doesn't necessarily extend to the stars dictating people's lives, but that's what a broad majority of people who do practice astrology, astrology actually do believe as Matt was saying, like that's, that's kind of part and parcel with the belief system. Um, and uh, I don't know it, every time they've done like broad studies and observing this stuff it, it doesn't seem to hold true um at best we have anecdote you know yeah and you're talking about a study with three people yeah 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 let's study everybody who's supposed to be intuitive and if we took everybody who's supposed to be a star sign that's intuitive what do you think the likelihood is that they would all get it right it depends because i personally think intuition is a skill you can own but those people inherently are close it's like a talent for them. Where do you think intuition comes from? I'm curious. Um, I'm not sure, honestly. I think maybe it's, I think at least part, the unconscious mind doing calculations without you realizing it. Could um, be. Could be. One of my, yeah. But one of my things is, well, yes, it's, it's well, Barnum's statements are broad, uh-huh. I everyone gets angry, but not everyone gets belligerent. A, a lot of people are hard working, but not everyone will run themselves ragged. You know? Mm -hmm. One thing I'd like to ask you guys to do, you you don't have to, but after you guys like get it when you guys get a chance, look at your closest friend's star sign and if they and I'm gonna guess that for Matt they're gonna be air and fire signs. And for Dan, they're going to be earth and other water signs. Okay. Well, I, I would want to know. I might be able to look at that, but I, you know, I want to go back to that point on intuition because. So hang on. No, no, no. I, let me just hit one thing. So for <laughs> me, it's going to be air or fire signs, right? Yes. So air signs are Gemini, Libra, and Aquarius, right? Yes. And fire signs are Aries, Leo, and Sagittarius, right? So you're telling me that my best friend is likely to be one of six of yeah. 12 fucking yeah. star signs. Yeah, that's Way half. to play the odds. Yeah. That's a coin toss. I mean, I mean, it's literally a coin toss. I'm sure it is, but at the same time. At the same time, nothing. It's a coin I, toss. If you can't get odds better than a coin toss, we definitely don't need to be spending time on it. All right, I can I can understand that. Yeah, uh, one more thing I want to say on intuition. You know, people talk about mm -hmm. people having these intuitions and stuff, and and what I think people mean a lot of times when they say that is just the calculations of their life experience. Um, you know, giving them the skills to do something. So, like, I play violin, for example, um, and if I hear a song on the radio that I know is in a key, I can I know my fingers can kind of know where to go because I have so much practice with it, I can intuitively do that. But that's not because there's something magical in me. That's because of my life experience and practice doing that. When a mother talks about their intuition, well, they've had experience being a mother for however many years, you know, so they know based on what their kid's going to do, that they're going to respond in a certain way. So like intuition, I, I don't think it's magical, at least, you know, I, I don't see a reason to think it is for, for most cases. I, I, I think it's just a, like a, like a, a combination of life experiences that lead you to, you know, come to certain conclusions about things. I think that can be explained through, you know, physical means, not necessarily anything supernatural, right? Yeah, I'm in, I'm in agreement with Dan. If, if you think yeah. that there's something to intuition that's beyond just training your brain to mm -hmm. uh, make more reasonable inferences, you'd need to demonstrate it. Mm -hmm. But we've got a bunch of other callers that have been on hold, some of them for more than an hour. So I want to try and move on a bit. Thank you for your time. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Time. Have a good one. All right. Yeah, so, so I mean, that's the big thing is, you know, it's like, oh, I bet 
you know, let me pick out six of the 12 star signs. And yeah. one of those is probably. I'm <laughs> glad you pointed that out. I'm glad you pointed that out because I, I, I don't know too much about the star signs, but. It happens. It happens a lot. It's, you know, it's one of those yeah. things where like, it's one of those things where you can make a statement that is true or likely true or feels true, but what are the actual odds? Lisa in Florida, how are you? You're on with Dan and Matt. Hi, how are you? Thanks for waiting so much. I appreciate I it. Was oh, no problem. <laughs> I was calling because I was curious how much the knowledge of all religions should be included when someone takes a stance on atheism. Mm. Um, similarly, um, you know, like somebody with a Christian background can be challenged by saying, well, what do you know about other religions? So I'm just curious from your perspective how, how, how that kind of comes together. F um, I guess I'll go first on this one. Um, sure. So like, that's an interesting question because if I was to make the claim, for example, that, oh, I believe this God is the true God, then that's me saying all other claims are invalid, right? Like that's me just completely disputing the legitimacy of all other claims. If we're talking about Yahweh in particular, right? The Christian God, because that's kind of, that's one of the things that if you believe in, uh, for most mainstream Christians, right? You kind of have to take that as true before you can take anything else to be true. But typically as atheists, and I don't speak for all atheists when I say this, because atheists identify their atheism in different ways, but you know, we're the ones kind of saying, we're, we're not making any particular claims about any gods, right? We're, we're kind of uh, holding back. We're, we're um, a bit more skeptical about all the propositions. We, we hold the null proposition maybe to be true. We're not going to hold um, our belief in anything until we see evidence of it. So in that sense, I don't have to particularly know much about any religion in order to hold the stance that I do. If I was to be more knowledgeable about a particular religion and I found it to be true in some sense, then I might hold belief in it. Um, but me not holding a belief in it now isn't contrary to that being true, right? It's just me saying, oh, I, I'm not sure about it yet. I don't know enough information. I can't say one way or another. Maybe, I don't know if you agree with that, Matt, but that's how I kind yeah, of if, if someone were saying, I am absolutely convinced there are no gods, then what they're, the, the claim that they're essentially making would come with a burden of proof. And, and there are people who think they can meet that. Mm -hmm. And I may or may not be one of them, depending on definitions. Yeah. But it's... The, the issue here is that that's not what we normally mean by saying I'm an atheist or I'm a non-believer. So there could be some God concept out there, which nobody on planet Earth knows, but it's a legit God concept. And I right. still don't know whether or not it's true. And so the time to believe something is after there's good reason for it. So I'm like Dan in the sense that I'm not convinced. I, I used to be convinced that Jesus was God. I'm not convinced of that anymore. Uh, I'm not convinced of Allah, Yeshua, Zeus, Thor, Odin, um, Zenu, you know, wh whatever. None of those do I find convincing. I've also not convinced of ones that I don't know about. And so that's all, that's all my position is, is until somebody demonstrates that there is a God, I don't believe it. Just like there could be a unicorn, a Loch Ness monster, or some other xenobiological weird right. thing that nobody's ever heard of, but I don't believe in it yet. Yeah. Yeah, and I said the null proposition. It's okay. actually null hypothesis. Yeah, I think I got that confused. But yeah. And if somebody comes up to me and says, "Hey, do you believe in in Fergal Blurgle?" I'm going to say no <laughs> until they demonstrate what it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm so just curious. Both of you have a Christian background. Yes, correct. But Baptist, actually, and both so of us. Would you? Okay, so but would you both be able to say that you would be able to say that God? you're not on board with and then mm. at that point do you make the conscious effort to like make the progression to understand well is there another one in these other aspects or is it i i know that this one's not right and so i i don't know enough about the other ones to make a claim either way great question uh matt you want to go first so i i don't believe in any, in any of them yeah there are some of them that i think I can actively say those are simply not true. There's something about the quality or description of them that conflicts with other evidence that we have. Um, but for, for most of them, it's like, I'm, I just remain unconvinced. And when it comes to looking for others, yes, I looked into a lot of different religions. Uh, have I looked into all of them? No, because quite frankly, I stopped realizing it would take me more than a lifetime to investigate every religion. And instead I started looking at philosophy 
to figure out what kind of God might exist. And yeah. of, of the world's religions that I've been exposed to, I don't see any evidence that they even might exist. And I don't, you know, because I wanted to direct the search. And I, I joke that I started with Buddhism because I want, if, if this was going to take more than one lifetime, I wanted to find out how many lifetimes I was, there you go. was yeah. going to have. But I mean, that's, it's just a joke. Um, yeah. If yeah. there is a God and it expects me to know and understand it, uh, it's got to kind of meet me part way. It can't just be, okay, I'm hiding. Now you go and investigate every claim about every God that's ever been done. And maybe you'll find me because that's not a God I care to find. Yeah. And, and, and for myself, Lisa, you know, if we're talking about the God of baptism, right? Yahweh, right? Um, that particular construct as most Christians define it. Yeah. I think we can kind of say it's not true. I think we can look at evidences to see where those ideas come from as far as, again, that construct of God. And, and, and there may be other God constructs that, you know, I might be more hesitant to say are true or not. You know, if you're defining God as like the universe or something, you know, that gets a little more iffy with philosophy and stuff. But if we're saying, no, yeah, the God of the Bible, Yahweh, who did such and such in Israel and did this and that. Yeah, I think we can more or less say that that particular conception isn't true because we can demonstrate, no, this event actually didn't happen this way. If we're talking about um, where the Jewish people enslaved in Egypt, for example, you know, that's a historical event that happened. Like, like there's certain events that the Bible describes we could look at um, and also certain things that are described about God working in history that we could look at. So would you say that in, um, in looking at that, it would be necessary for a Christian believer to be able to prove that no other gods are real or above Yahweh, right? Versus no, I, an atheist saying all gods are not real. Is that kind of where we're getting at? No, no I no. don't. Yeah, if go we, ahead. If somebody proves that a god is real, you don't have to disprove all the others. If you can demonstrate okay. that what you believe is true, you don't have to disprove all the others unless they're also compatible with it. But atheists, by the way, aren't saying all gods are not real. We're saying mm -hmm. I, we're, we don't believe that any of the gods are real and, and until, somebody, right. yeah. until somebody proves it, but it, it's more than just don't know. Like yeah. I, I, it's not, it's not just passive disbelief. I actively disbelieve. And it's primarily for me, the, the argument from divine hiddenness, which basically suggests that if in fact, these gods that people were proposing were real, we would have undeniable, indisputable evidence that would warrant belief. And when I hear people tell me that they believe, I always ask why. And I, yeah, I have yet to get anything to any answer to that why question that should be considered sufficient evidence. It, it would be like, you know, the call earlier today where Jose is convinced because he knows what he experienced. Well, cool, but that doesn't help anybody else. And if you can't present a reasoned argument supported by some sort of evidence, not just empirical evidence, but any methodology you show you, you want to use that leads to reliable results as per the debate that I had yesterday on epistemology, I'll believe it. Yeah. Okay. Just curious. Sure. Cool. Appreciate the call. Yeah, Thank thanks you, Lisa. For thanks. Stay safe. There in Florida where your governor just reopened everything, despite the fact that, right. all right, I'm going to stay yeah. away from the backstreet boys reunion. Cause I don't want us to get, but it, you make a good point, though. You could prove that Yahweh is a thing, and that doesn't necessarily mean that other gods aren't. You know, um, right? And and if you look at the history of the ancient Jewish people, I think they would say that yeah, that's probably true, right? Like they, I, there's a lot of history that or yep. evidence that does suggest that they they were polytheistic in nature, and that it was only kind of in more recent times that monotheism became the trend. But it's it's interesting. Yeah, exactly. There, there is. It's undeniable that there was a point at which Judaism was polytheistic. I mean, yeah. it, you just you just can't get to some of the language and some of that without it. Yeah. Um, it's but, like, you know, thou shalt have no yeah. other gods before me type of language. Yeah. But tell, tell that to a Christian today. And that's just that's completely foreign. You know, that's right. just not not a possibility in that worldview. And then in so. addition to polytheistic notions, there's potentially henotheistic notion. Mm -hmm. and, and when you get to Catholicism, where you've got. Uh, all these angels and demons and the saints and and the and, and praying to Mary and all this other stuff. Which, all right, now I'm putting my Baptist hat back on to say <laughs> Catholics are a Mary worshiping cult. Yeah, exactly uh, right, and and they are. Uh, it's uh, it's a bit of fun. Let's see. Um, let's 
Oh, here we go. Here's uh, Jacob in California. You're on with Dan and Matt. How are you? Cool. Doing good. How about you guys? Doing all right. Good. Cool, man. Cool. Well, I'll just get right to it. I know that uh, we've gone a long time on the show already, so thanks for uh, taking the call. But, um, yeah, so I had I had this, this theory um, that I've been working on, you know, uh, I will say with God's guidance. I know that's not a popular phrase around here. However, um, you know, as I'm reading the Bible, um, I actually, oh, and Matt, I will say one thing to you. Um, you made a comment uh, a long time ago, a few times, quite a few times. And when I was a Trinitarian still, uh, it actually was one of the things that made me go like, wow, that's a really good point. I don't know how to get around that. You said God sacrificed himself to himself to appease himself. And that stuck with me. And I was like, yep. man, I don't, that is a good point. I don't know how to get around that. <laughs> so uh, I, I came to the knowledge through the Bible, though, that I actually don't hold to the Trinitarian view anymore because I don't think it's coherent. I, I'm um, curious. I'm curious. And I'll let you, I'll let your point there. just, but just for clarity, are you suggesting sure. then that you think the Joe and comma is an interpolation in addition? Do I think that what is, I'm sorry, the Joe and comma, the, 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 the passage that was generally scholars think that this was edited to make an excuse for the Trinity and that the original versions don't include that passage. Uh, I, never just go on with your point. It's not going to be. Well, it's no, not going to be relevant okay. I would, today. I would address it, whatever you were talking about. Yeah, I, I know there's one passage in First John that I do believe was added in later on that there are three that bear record in heaven. Right. And that That's what I'm talking about, Father. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yes, I do believe that that was added in later. Yes. Okay. Cool. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. So uh, anyway, my point though was just that as I've been studying the Torah, because I am a Torah observant Christian. Um, to the best of my ability. Some things are applicable, some are not. That's just a theological fact of it. It's not cherry-picking. Um, however, I do think a lot of the laws in the Old Testament would fix or at least take a step towards fixing some of the societal problems we see today. And the one huh. example I wanted to bring up... Uh, yeah, yeah. So the one example I wanted to bring up was um, fatherless households or, or single-parent rates, how they have just absolutely skyrocketed uh, in the last, I don't know, 20, 30 years, depending on the statistics you go to, right? It was can, 20%. Can I ask you, I know you have a, I know you've been thinking about this and you've been wanting to tell Matt, but can I ask you a quick question? All good, man. Do I'm, you, do you think yeah. that all the laws in the old Testament, all of those ideas, do you think they're all good for society today? I don't think some are applicable today. So it's mm -hmm. not even a matter of if I think they're good for society or not. I don't think some are applicable, but I think the ones that are, yeah, certainly would. Okay, so I'm glad to address uh, any of them it, that you guys want. Yeah, if some are applicable, right, and some aren't, then why not just base a society on what's applicable, and just take that? Why do we have to include the well, entire Torah into yeah, our I consideration? Why? Well, I mean, you, you have to know you have to know it because then you can say whether or not it's applicable or not. You see what I mean? Do so we have, have to know? Do we have to know the applicable. Torah to know if it's applicable or not? Can we just look at the idea itself and say, hey, this is a good thing to implement into our society? Okay, I think, I think the slight disconnect here might be that I'm saying it's applicable based on theology, and you might, okay. you might be saying applicable based on like society. Is that correct? I don't want to put words. Yeah, here. yeah, that's probably what it is. But like, do we do we need a, a theological explanation to know whether something is good for us or not? I think it's the only way you can get a real understanding of of what's in there. Because if you have bad theology, you're going to come up with bad conclusions. I mean, there's denominations of Christianity that prove that. You know, what if you have no theology? Uh, yeah. <laughs> what if you're like us? Yeah, if you have no theology, uh, you can go back and actually look at, like, the common dooms. Uh, I'm sorry, the dooms of the common law back in the uh, colonial days, you know, mm -hmm. of America. And you can see that they were actually word for word almost with the Ten Commandments. They didn't call them the Ten Commandments, though. But people did them, and they applied them. And, and in some cases, I would argue that you have you had less of the crime and things like that that we have today. I mean, some— well, Yeah, there were less people. Like that, so. So, you, 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 okay, so I have a weird capita. question. You could do per capita. Let's, you could do per capita, but go ahead. Yeah. Well, no, because you can, per capita still changes with regard to access. And like, I can't, I couldn't hop uh, a train at the found and to get away at the beginning of the founding of the country. Right. right. And I definitely couldn't hop a plane to another country. Uh, I could go hide out in the woods, but anyway. Yeah. The question the question I had to ask is, let's say there's something in the Old Testament that you think is essential and beneficial in modern society, 
And let's mm -hmm. just say for the sake of argument that I agree with you that this would be essential and beneficial to modern society. What is that? Does that tell us anything at all about whether or not the Bible is true or accurate? Does it tell us anything at all about whether or not there's a divine source for it? Because no, I'm never, I've never claimed that the Bible doesn't have some good advice in it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So yeah, no, as far as does it, does it prove that the, the divine inspiration of it, I would say in and of itself, no, that fact does not prove the divine inspiration of it. I would go to other avenues. I would go to things that I've just seen yeah. absolutely get obliterated uh, on the show. And, and honestly, I'm not interested. But I mean, there's a bunch of calls waiting, and, mm -hmm. and I, I don't, I'm not trying to be rude, but if the thing is, let's say you said something that you and I agree on, uh, it's not going to prove that God is real. It's not going to prove the Bible's reliable. And if you say something that you and I don't agree on, then we have no way to move forward because you're basing this on your personal view of theology and I don't share that. So the only way we can do this yeah, is a re there's a reason why the United States is a secular nation founded on a secular document is because religious religions can't agree. We need to have laws that, and, and policies that don't appeal to people's personal religious convictions. Yeah. Yeah. I could see that being a true point. I mean, I would just say that there, there doesn't seem to be off the top of my head, any other, any other uh, holy book laid down that had laws that would still be applicable today that, that show such wisdom, you know, that comes from man because man's views changed back then things that could yeah. still be applied today. I would say that that in some I way, mean, we're also talking about the book that advocated for stoning people, my man. I mean, what wisdom is that? What wisdom is there in stoning somebody to death for not following the laws? Do you not believe in like capital punishment of any kind then? You're anti- No, and I certainly don't believe in stoning somebody to death is the best way to do that capital punishment. What wisdom is there? Please tell me. Where is the wisdom in that? Well, then this is the part where I might get laughed off the show and that's fine. But the wisdom in that was to show the severity of the crime. I mean, you might not agree to that or like that, but at the end of the day, that's, that was the goal of the law was to show the severity of the sin of the crime. And it was to rid the evil from among you as, as the word says, right? So yeah, that, like, it, like it, picking it, up, like picking up sticks on Sunday or having an unruly child. Those are severe. Let's kill them. Well, see, unruly child, Matt. That's just that's a gross misrepresentation of what that means. And we can uh, okay, if you want. picking up sticks. Sure let's let's say sticks. now. I mean, let uh, me just assume that you're correct, and I'm grossly misrepresenting what it says. I'm literally using the language that it says. But let's no, assume. No, hang, on, means, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Yep. Jesus, it's. I'm trying to give you every benefit of the doubt. You can't even let me finish the sentence. Let's assume that you are correct, and I am grossly misrepresenting it, and I have a child. Uh -huh. who, who is essentially a drug-dealing gang member who will not listen to me and keeps violating the law. Should we kill him? I mean, in, in those times, yeah, that would have been the procedure. Yeah. No, procedure. I'm that's saying should we kill him true. now? No, I think that's one of those. Why, is it, why was it right be, then? Why was it right then and not right now? It's a it's something that changed. It was right then because that's what God commanded, and it changed. Yeah. because we are told to deal with certain things like that differently now, based on. Okay, how about this? Uh, dip the live bird in the blood of the dead one. Oh, no, I'm sorry, that's the wrong thing. Uh, where is that? I'm trying to find the verse of you know where I'm talking about, Matt. I mean, uh, I, using I bird blood for ceremonies and sacrifices. I mean, not yeah, sacrifices. cure cure for leprosy. The cure for leprosy. Thank you. That's what I was trying to. You know, do we want to use birds blood in, in curing not leprosy? A cure for birds? leprosy. No, that's not a cure for leprosy. The the Levites were also the doctors of that time. And so you were paying them with the bird. They were eating the meat, and that was their payment in order to be the constant priests and doctors of the time. That literally is, is how that should be, um, you know, maybe not translated, but that is the understanding that needs to be had when you're talking about that. It wasn't why do, using blood to cure leprosy. Why are we using that? Why is blood, bird's blood need to be involved in the process? How is that helping the because situation? The, the Levites? Yes. The Levi, it was just a, it was just a payment. Yeah, it was just no, a, no, 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 no. Like the no, bird, it's body, so here we, the payment so, and the blood as a result. So, no, so Leviticus 14 is yeah. where this is coming from. Yeah, thank you. And the priest shall order that one of the birds be killed over fresh water in a clay pot. He's then to take the live bird, dip it together with the cedar wood, the scarlet yarn, and the hyssop into the blood of the bird that was killed over the fresh water. Seven times shall he sprinkle the one to be cleansed of the defiling disease and then pronounce them clean. That's not a payment. It's blood magic. And it's right there in your book. That's a pain. Okay, so that that is one that I wasn't thinking of when you said that. So in that aspect, there's an argument to be made that hyssop 
and the scarlet and things of that nature actually had healing properties and it was it was a healing thing it wasn't yeah. blood yeah. magic as, as so, so basically so, you're opposed yeah, to blood magic that. you're you're opposed to this notion of blood magic until all of a sudden you're cornered into what it actually says and now you think that this blood magic used to work but so if i if i followed this procedure now does it not work anymore and by the way, what kind of cleansings does it do? No, I don't know. You would have to you would have to see the healing properties of hyssop and all those things, you know, mixed together. Maybe there is some way where it actually has a natural. Are you really giving this the benefit of the doubt because it's in your own book? If yeah. you read this in another book, would you really give it this benefit, benefit of the doubt? doubt? I mean, really? you know, at the end of the day, I didn't believe it at first when I first read it, but after coming to the conviction that it was true, I started to realize that it is true and there's Lots of scholars that well, Jacob. I'll tell you what. Go to a scientist, or go go to your local university professor, and go ahead and try this, and we can see if this works or not. Because, right. quite frankly, right, what what are we doing? You know, yeah. like if, if you're going to yeah. sit here and make a case for blood magic and Old Testament stuff, it's not going to get us anywhere. Uh, because in the thousands of years since this was written, or hundreds of years since it was written, depending on which which version you're going to read. Surely somebody who gave a damn could test and show that this blood magic is real. Now in Leviticus 14, before anybody emails in about it, this is one, not the one that is necessarily, it, it, the blood magic part doesn't necessarily cure the disease. It can make one ceremonially clean. And that's why I call it blood magic because the person must wash their clothes, shave their hair, bathe with this water, and then they're ceremonial clean, ceremonially clean, and then they come into the camp. But it, th this notion- Yeah, I wouldn't even- I wouldn't even put that into it. I wouldn't hold you to that because I don't know that it says ceremonially clean. So if someone will, that's fine. They I just it. read it. You were fair, but I wouldn't. Yeah, I, I literally just read it. Yeah, but I'm saying it could also have healing properties. Well, like I'm saying. no, you don't know that it could. You do not know that it could. You do not know that it could also have healing properties. You're just trying to say, hey, you haven't proved that it doesn't yet. Well, isn't that well, true, though? Yes, it's true. Does it matter? Does it matter whether or not I've disproved it? The time to believe it is after it's been proven. Why has nobody in the entire history of the world demonstrated the truth of this thing in the Bible that makes you guys look like you're nuts? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I mean, at the end of the day, that's why haven't you that's done it? The theological discussion I was saying. No, it's not a theological yeah, well, discussion. The it's day, straight up science. Why haven't you done it? Well, if I'm not going to be allowed to finish, I mean, that's okay. It's your show. But, I mean, what I'm saying is it's part of the theological discussion because the Levitical priesthood it's is— It's not a theological a discussion. Priest. And so, well, it is, though. It's not. I don't care how many times you say it. It's a science-based thing. Either this process is effective for cleansing a disease or it's not. It's not a theological discussion. Oh, on that aspect, I see what you're saying. Okay. Yeah. Yes. That aspect, yeah. I don't know why someone hasn't done it. Yeah. I don't and know Jacob, why. why haven't you? Is it because you don't care about the truth? Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Right. No, no, it's not because I don't care. <laughs> I got to move on. We're, we're about out of time. Yeah. I want to try and get to another just, call. Just one more thing to say on that. You know, the thing is, if we keep trying to justify these older books and say, look how great some of this wisdom is, look how great, it, you know, all this stuff is, look how true this was, we are also importing the the prejudices and the awful things that come with it. Like that's yeah. a, that's a package deal. That's it's the reason why uh, my gay friends couldn't adopt somebody if they wanted to, because yep. you know, they're getting denied services because of, of some law. It's, it's, it's the same reason why my trans friends get, get the, the prejudices that they face because there's a thing in there saying that a man can't dress as a woman and they'll, they'll call them men and they'll say all these awful, awful things that aren't true. And it's just, it, we don't have to justify it. We can just get rid of it. Yeah. We, you know, it, it's funny because if I recall correctly, that call started out with him saying, this isn't cherry picking. <laughs> and yet it, it well, is. Yeah, it is. It is. It's, I don't know. It's, it's bad. It just, just don't deal with it. We can make, we can make a secular society with all the good stuff without all the bad stuff. You don't right. have to take it as a package deal. Are you ready, Dan? Because in 15, 15 years of hosting this show, I'm glad you're here today because this <laughs> is the call that I've been waiting for, for 15 years. Oh boy. Oh. Joe in Illinois, you are on with objectively Dan and Matt. And it clean, it says here that you can prove that the inspired word of God comes through you. So bring it on. Okay. Um, First, I have to give you a little bit of background. No, you don't. We're uh, about out of time. Okay. Well, I had found a lump on my right testicle, and I was 
I've always been an atheist my whole life. Let me start off with that. And now I recently become a theist because even I decided, you know what, I was like, I don't know if I'm going to die from this or whatnot. So I went to church and just for the heck of it, uh, poops and giggles, I guess you can say. And, well, they said, you know, well, why don't you pray to God just in case there's a God? So, of course, me being an ex-atheist, I said, well, why don't you hang garlic over your door in case there's a Dracula? And uh, they didn't like that and kicked me out of the church for saying such a comment. But they said that they would pray for me. So they started praying for me. And the very next day, um, I had woke up. Supposedly, they had all prayed for me that day. And I was like, how am I going to get rid of this cancerous tumor on my right testicle? Whoa, 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 whoa. Whoa, 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 whoa. I have questions. Huh. Okay. So you, when you started by telling us that you had a lump on your testicle, you didn't say it was cancerous. How did you know it was cancerous? Well, to be quite frank with you, uh, I can't tell. I don't know. Okay. For sure. So let's, let's not call it something that we don't know what it is. So am I, I'm, I'm correct <laughs> in saying that you had a lump on your testicles. A bunch of people prayed for you. Are you getting ready no, to tell me that the, my testicles I, on my right testicle. On your right testicle, a bunch of people prayed for you. Am I writing in that you're getting ready to say that you woke up the next morning and the, and the lump was gone? No. Oh. That's what I'm saying. Cool. What happened? Uh, I, ha I have a little bit of experience with hobby and stuff like that. So I went to Hobby Lobby. Now, they have all kinds of small things. and Like you could buy little razors that actually look like skin scalpels scalpels and stuff like that and i had had because i had met like a couple of years ago a uh, man he was an asian guy uh he worked did hospital supplies and stuff so he had given me stitches uh many many years ago because i would do a lot of work on uh joe on the hobbies and stitches. joe what you have wandered way far afield i apologize because it happened after i interrupted you you had a lump on your right testicle some people you made fun of in a church kicked you out. They prayed for you, and you said, and the next day, what follows that? that? Uh, okay, okay. So the next day I had woken up, and I had got the premonition to go get a, a scalpel-type razor blade and things. And I had, um, oh, th and another thing why I become a theist, because I used to think masturbation and my masturbatory sessions were okay. They are okay. But Joe, how yeah. does, how does any of this prove that God comes through you? That the inspired word of God comes through almost, you? Almost. Okay. Almost, almost there now. So I had cut my scrotum with this razor blade and actually. Clipped I don't, I don't believe this story and I don't believe you're getting to a point. Oh, Matt, I love your show. So hold on. No, nope, I don't love your call. <laughs> Sorry, Dan. Okay. I thought we were finally going to get evidence of God. Well, that's all right. There's always another day. Well, we may be able to do one last thing because I have on the phone uh, somebody else who's named Dan. Yes, I see that one too. Can we do that one? Uh, who claims to have found multiple pieces of evidence for the devil. So yes. since we couldn't get a proof of God, Dan, bring on the proof of the devil. Oh, Christ almighty. Am I online? You sure yep. are. And we're, we're already over the time limit for the show. We are extending it just so you can okay. try and prove okay. the devil. Please okay. do not disappoint and do not waste time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and don't say it's Matt. Don't say it's Matt because that joke's already been made by listen, me. Listen, Matt, Matt, uh, uh, I lied. I lied and I, 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 I will face my God. Uh, uh, uh. Goodbye. All righty. I appreciate your honesty after your dishonesty. Yeah, don't lie to try to get on the show, please. It's not good. We will let's, not do, let, let's try and do this real quick here. Um, I'm assuming you're not in a hurry, but we have Enoch from Pennsylvania on with Dan and Matt. How are you? 
I'm doing great. I'm so glad to speak with you guys. Sorry we're over time. Thank you for taking my call. Yeah, it says here that your question is, why do we want to convince people that they're wrong? Yeah, so basically, like a lot of theists and Christians or other religious people get their hope, their meaning in life from what they believe. So it's like, even if they're wrong, um, that's where they find their happiness, their joy. Why would you want to take that away from people? Mm. So first of all, I'm not trying to take anything away. I'm trying to have a conversation about the truth. But if somebody gets their hope from something that isn't true, isn't that by definition false hope? Yes. But even if somebody if really likes their I lucky rabbit foot and starts making decisions about their lucky rabbit's foot, including how to invest money, wouldn't you want to try to convince them that maybe they don't have a good reason to trust their little magic foot or just want to let people be happy in their ignorance, even if it's dangerous? Um. Well, if the Lucky's rabbit's foot was going to benefit them or make them make wise decisions, even though their premise or their hope in this rabbit's foot is false, then... If the hope in the rabbit's foot is false, then the rabbit's foot can't do that, can it? You know, not in and of itself, but like... Correct. So know. whatever it is that is actually benefiting them isn't the rabbit's foot, right? Yes. Yeah. And so if their belief in the rabbit's foot could also harm them and others, then we don't just get to dismiss that harm. Right. So but I if don't somebody has a belief in a God, if somebody has a belief in a God, and because of that belief in a God, let's say they think that homosexuality is immoral mm -hmm. and that people who love each other who are of the same gender should not be allowed to couple. Yeah. And then they vote based on that or harm to other people here. Even worse, right? They think, oh, conversion therapy is a real thing that works and we should try that on that person. You know, like not only is that not true, but that can bring active harm. Does it matter what's true, Enoch? Does the yeah. truth matter? The truth does matter. Uh, yeah. yeah, absolutely. And and if if somebody's pointing out, hey, do you have a good reason for that to, be, to think that's true? And the, all of the reasons they present are bad. Simply getting them to acknowledge that isn't a problem. It's not my fault that they were convinced of something bad. And, and by the way, just because I talk to somebody and tell them what, that I don't accept what they say or point out logical fallacies, I'm not the one taking their belief away. I'm trying to get them to give their belief up for good reasons because I want people to believe things for good reasons. I want people to have as many true beliefs and as few false beliefs as possible. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Yep. There That's you the reason why. Thanks for the call. There you go. Yeah. There's somebody in this country right now who is trying to heal their cancer by just eating blueberries. Like I, I guarantee you there's somebody out there that's doing that. You know, like I, I wouldn't, I don't want that for them. I would want to show them better ways and to figure out how to deal and manage with that. Um, and, and sometimes it's a matter of giving people information. Sometimes it's a matter of, you know, even just bringing it up in conversation or, or, or just have, saying that belief out loud for somebody and realizing, oh, wait, that doesn't sound right, you know? Um, so you want to try to talk about it as much as you can. Um, I'm going to try and get to, to two more. Um, if, oh. if we have time, we're gonna start with, uh, Jeremy, uh, you're on with objectively Dan and Matt. I was hoping you guys would put me on today. They told me not to hang up. Um, they'd tell me if the calls were not going to be answered. So I'm really happy to be on the show. Can and we don't have a ton of time and I apologize for that, but seeing how long you were on hold, I wanted to make sure we tried to get to you. I think yeah, thank you so much. I, I have a really good defense um well like a defensive style for defending theism mm -hmm. and i basically i feel like you could throw any kind of question at me and i could defend theism um sure the what's the evidence what is the evidence today? what is the evidence that a god exists okay so um what i usually talk with people about because i i deal with a lot of um theists and i think that they're kind of like led astray so i think it's better to defend uh one true god than it is to defend um, a God. So why is it that like, you said uh, I could throw any question at you and it wouldn't be a problem, and the first question I throw at you is immediately right. deflected? Well, um, to say that a God exists, um, have you heard of the God of um, 
of what is it? Small spaces. Uh, it's kind of like a Neil deGrasse Tyson bit. No. Um, it, it's the idea of a receding God. And I think that's what Yahweh means in the Bible. So basically there are many gods in the Bible. There are like 10 names of God in the Bible. Right. Okay. And each one has a very important meaning to society and to individuals. So like your first caller, uh, or there was someone who talked for like 45 minutes on one point, and he, um, I think he would have really benefited from this knowledge. That there are so many different definitions of God, and we just dis dismiss them all um, in our modern, you, you talked about it. Yeah, it's almost as if God has existed in different constructs with different ideas over different periods of time, and is it coherent Absolutely. to everybody? So often right. on the show I'll hear, you'll talk about how people, like you're talking about Leviticus and you say, well, that doesn't make any sense at all by modern standards. And people say, well, it changed. But what I think a, be a better way to defend this point is that um, the authors have changed. The authors have changed over time. And we Jeremy, are totally disconnected. Jeremy. I don't even understand what those people were like. Jeremy, yes. why is it that I asked for yes. what is the evidence to demonstrate that God exists and you have come nowhere near that? Well, because when, when I'm talking about the God of, of um, small spaces, I think that's the God that we believe in. And um, I don't want to say that you're a theist, but when you say we, that you should wait for we don't believe We don't believe in a God. Okay. Um, well, God is a concept. So it's okay, a but did, okay, let me stop, Jeremy. There are God concepts. Do you believe in an actual extant thinking agent entity God or merely a God concept? Um. As far as an extant entity thinking God, yeah, I would say um, like kind of God on high or, or like a Godhead within yourself, the Holy Spirit type of God. Yeah, um, I, I don't know if that answered his question. Why is it that you call in to say that you'd be so good at answering questions and yet you have not answered? So the God that you are, are wanting to argue for, is it a thinking agent that exists independent of us? Um, well, okay. F from a mathematical perspective, you, you have to think in <laughs> from a mathematical perspective, from a mathematical perspective, your man. evidence plus your reasoning equals zero. That's from math. From a mathematical perspective. I love that. I'm going <laughs> to, I'm going to start saying that, uh, if I don't right. know the immediate answer or something. Last call for the day. We've got Anthony with Dan and Matt, uh, who wants to tell us about a God that existed in the past but doesn't today. So, hey, how you doing? Doing all right. Hey. From a mathematical perspective, I'm doing all right. <laughs> hey, um, just real quick, big fan. Um, I just, it's just it's a little hard to watch you guys sometimes, not because of you guys, but imagine how it is to be us. Actually, call on there. Yeah. Exactly. The thing is, is God is nothing except a title. It's all it is. It's nothing more. Nothing. How do you more. know that? You see it. You see it in the Old Testament. You got Jehovah, Yahweh, El, Elohim. These are just different people going under a title. People and like for you. Reason. Yeah. Exactly. Well, but, no, because in, in the Bible, those those things. Those uh, proposed names are tied to things that people can't do. Yeah. Like, like yeah, you create the universe. That, that's, that's a, yeah, but that's the thing. You know, it's us, not us, but the people then putting these ideas onto these other people. These other people say, hey, I did this. Anthony? And everybody's like, yay, look what Anthony? he did. Yeah. How do you prove that? You got a time machine? It, it, nope. That, that, that's my whole point. Is you know, it 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 doesn't matter. It does it, matter. It, it, and don't call in saying that you want to prove a proposition and then tell me it doesn't matter because we waited around and extended the show just for you, and you wasted Dan's time. I don't care about my time. <laughs> You're not going to waste Dan's time because Dan is here. And by the way, we, we've already gotten rid of the caller. Dan <laughs> is here. Uh, sorry, Dan. <laughs> They're getting ready to put up the thing because I want to make sure that we're promoting Truth Wanted. I want to thank everybody who watched today. Uh, thank the crew who did all the uh, actual work behind the scenes to try to make sure that we were uh, ready and good to go. And I think yeah, that yeah, they're yeah. going to put up something here at the end of the show related to Truth Wanted. 
Yeah, so hopefully they'll put up the graphic here in just a second. But that's my show, Truth Wanted. It's live Fridays at 7 p.m. Central Time uh, from a mathematical perspective. And uh, it's a call-in show just like this one. Like I said, we do talk about atheism, but we talk about conspiracies, aliens, just what people believe and why, you know, and, and the conversations therein. Uh, this week, I actually did get clearer. And so just to make sure, we're going to have Christy Powell. So if you're a fan of secular sexuality, uh, there you go. There's another crossover happening. So uh, they'll be my guests this week. And um, yeah, it's going to be fun. Always new guests all the time. And uh, looking forward to having some pretty big guests up in the future as well. Maybe uh, you've heard of this guy. I don't know, Matt. Uh, Jesus Christ. Ooh, you heard of him? I've heard of Jesus. I yeah. thought he was dead. What happened? Well, so it turns out uh, he, he isn't. He's making stuff on YouTube. Uh, he's got about 1.1 million subscribers. What? And uh, he's going to be making an appearance on my show uh, in October. So be looking forward to that. I, I am. I, I'm I'm crazy jealous and, uh, and a little irritated that all these years I've been hosting the Atheist Experience. And before that, I was a fundamentalist Christian, and I was praying desperately for Jesus to reveal himself to me, to help me out so that I could be a good representative uh, for Jesus. And I never got any answer. I just left alone. And all these years just asking, I mean, we, you could have saved us a bunch of time today. <laughs> saved us if you just said, time. Jesus is going to be on my show. Yeah, that's it. That's it. So, yeah, looking forward to that. Um, and, uh, yeah, come check me out if you haven't already. Outstanding. We appreciate everybody who uh, donated today and who supports us through Patreon or membership. Um, I, I greatly appreciate the people who are watching and most of your opinions. Some of your opinions, I'm not, I'm not going to lie, I'm not as fond of, but that's fine. It's just uh, we love doing this and having those conversations. And despite what some people might think, our goal here is not to make somebody look stupid or to ponzerize someone as if we're in a first person shooter. And I don't view debates as if they're WWE events and I don't prepare for the person. I prepare for the issues, which is why the questions that seem to irritate people the most when they call into the show is when I say, how can you actually demonstrate that? That has nothing to do with who you are or anything else. Um, that's the way things work. If you're going to care about epistemology, if you're going to care about a way to find the truth, then you need to focus on that and not on the person. And there's videos upcoming where I'm going to address that as well, um, which is why I get so irritated when somebody says I'm intentionally manipulating them or I'm trying to make them look stupid. No, you do that all on your own by showing up to claim that you have evidence for something that you don't. And that's not your fault. You're not stupid. You're not having uh, mental health issues. You are just like everybody else. Dan and I both believed this stuff for many years. Sincerely, we were not stupid. Our IQs didn't go up when we stopped believing. We just stopped accepting things on bad evidence and bad reasons. And if you show up any given week with an actual good reason, and by the way, divine revelation, not a good reason because you can't, I can't share that with good reason. You can change both of our minds. And that happens here on Atheist Experience and on Truth Wanted. We'll see you next week. Bye bye. Later. What are we doing, man? What are we doing? No, 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 no.